Experience a new level of luxury on Topsail Island at Saltwater Suites in Surf City, North Carolina. With no nightly minimum, you can enjoy short getaways or an extended stay. Each suite features luxury bedding, full kitchens with dining tables and dishwashers, and all suites other than the three ADA suites have full-size washers and dryers. And don't forget about those beautiful ocean views. 24-7 self-check-in provides a hassle-free and seamless experience. Saltwater Suites is the perfect choice for your next beach getaway. Book your next Topsail visit at saltwatertopsail.com or call 910-886-4818. Saltwater Suites, Topsail Island's premier luxury hospitality experience. Welcome to the Topsail Insider Podcast, where you can hear all about the businesses and events in the beautiful coastal towns of the greater Topsail area of North Carolina. Coming up, join me for an interview with Ms. Rini Hermawan, a young entrepreneur who's stepping into business ownership with style, grace, and faith. Today, she'll share her journey of acquiring a little fancy and launching her mobile coffee shop, Restored Coffee. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Topsail Insider Podcast. My name is Krista, and I am your host. Today, I am interviewing Miss Rini Hermawan. She is the owner and head barista of Restored Coffee. Her mobile coffee shop currently serves Topsail and soon down in the Wilmington and Carolina Beach area. So that means we'll be listing her in both the Topsail Insider podcast as well as the new Wilmington Breakout series. She's going to be one of the very first ones in the Wilmington Breakout series. I'm so excited. Welcome, Rini, and thank you for joining me. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm so excited and honored that I'll be on the Wilmington's one. Awesome. So first, I want to do an introduction to Rini. And Rini, I promise I am not going to just focus on your age, but I just want to, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. Okay, 20 years old. The reason I'm just blown away by your age is because when when I was 20, I was not opening up my own business. And I'm a little jealous. And I wish that I had had my head on the way that you do right now. And I just want to let people know that that's something so unusual and such a great quality about you and um, let other people your age know that it's entirely possible. So that's all I'm going to say. I was able to try Rini's coffee recently from her beautifully renovated, very stylish camper, which is now her mobile coffee shop. And I'll tell you about that in more detail later. I had her Burry Chocolate Mocha. Mm. Mocha is my favorite. And tell me about your connection with Burry Chocolates here in Hampstead. I just really like all their things, um, mm-hmm. especially their chocolate covered fruit. Yes. Um, and about a year or two ago, I had the chance to buy their hot chocolate, which is literally like shaved dark chocolate. Oh, and, I want one right now. Oh, <laughs> sounds so good. <laughs> but I was just like, you know, this sounds like it would be very good in a mocha. So I tried it one day and I was hooked. Um, so I asked the owner, Emily, if I could use it for my coffee shop. And yeah. she was like, yeah. So I was like, give me five pounds of that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, I do love it when I see, you know, businesses helping businesses or supporting each other. I think that's just such a great thing that I see a lot around here in Topsail area. So tell me when and where you learned your barista skills. I started working at Sundial Coffee and Tea maybe three or four years ago. I can't remember the date right now, but I worked with Bridget, the owner, Mm -hmm. um, for about two and a half years and learned all my barista skills there. Cool. Mm -hmm. How did you decide that you wanted to open up your own shop, particularly a mobile coffee shop? I was going into my senior year. I was doing that, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something completely different, something I could actually genuinely enjoy and something that I could show my talents Mm -hmm. for, I guess. And I really liked making coffee. So I was thinking maybe I can do a coffee shop. And then one day my friend showed me this really cute mobile coffee trailer on Instagram. And Mm -hmm. I was like, that is such a good idea. So since then, I like couldn't stop thinking about it. I was praying about it. I was like, is this something I need to do? And finally, I was like, I just got to bite the bullet and start this process, you know? 
So your inspiration came from when your friend showed you this picture of the camper. Otherwise, you had not been thinking about doing any type of a mobile. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you raised money to start your business. Um, One of the things I did was I created t-shirts for everybody to get. They will not only have a piece of merchandise that goes with the coffee shop, but it's also channeling my inner art. And I created these shirts myself. That's what I was getting around to. You are getting to express your artistic talents a little bit because you design these really cool t-shirts. To me, those t-shirts have kind of a vintage feel to them. Is that just me or did you intend for it to be that way? I did definitely want it to have like a more worn feel and almost look, Mm -hmm. which is why I chose comfort colors. I love all their stuff and it just naturally looks really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love them. They look really pretty. So you were, you were selling those shirts before you even had the camper? I think I already had the camper at this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those same colors also carried over to, I'm noticing the same look and feel in the t-shirts, in your personal style, even, even your website. It's all this very vintage, chill, soothing colors. It's an obsession. Is it really? <laughs> is it because honestly, I do really like all those colors, and probably half of my closet right now is those colors. But I definitely wanted to maintain like a specific brand. You definitely have that going. You've got a strong brand, and I don't even know that you didn't have someone helping you create the brand, or did you? I did. Um, my friend Olivia, she has her own like website design company. Olivia Lauren Design Co. Okay, is her company and. She helped me create a website, and she also helped me kind of form the restored name and assisted me with finding colors that I really liked and that went really well together. Mm -hmm. And she created my whole website. It's a beautiful website. Thank you. I'm going to get to that in in just a minute, too. I I really do love the website. I do want to ask one quick question. Can you share one of the biggest challenges that you faced getting your shop up and running? Is there one particular challenge that really stands out to you? There were many challenges, oh. <laughs> but I think one of the biggest challenges is just figuring out how to build out the camper. We had no experience in that area whatsoever. So it looks like it was a giant task. Yes. I admire you. And I know that you had a lot of help from your family as well. Yes, definitely. Um, My dad helped a ton and mm. then also my fiance and his dad helped. So even a few people in our neighborhood lent a hand whenever I needed something we didn't have, which was awesome. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Takes a village. Okay. So let's talk about the trailer. Tell me, um, where did you find her and what condition was she in when you found her? So Lil Fancy was... (laughs) I love that name (laughs) so much. (laughs) She came with that name and she was located in Asheville when we went to pick her up. The week that I decided, like, hey, I'm going to do it out of a vintage camper, my Mm -hmm. fiancé had jumped on Craigslist and found her almost immediately, Mm -hmm. which Craigslist, a lot of times I think, is a little sketchy right now. I agree. (laughs) But for some reason, I felt like maybe this is is like a sign, like I definitely need to get it right now. So I I did pray over it that night, and I woke up, and I was like, I'm going to call this lady, and... If she ends up not selling it before I call her, then that means I don't need it. But she was like, okay, if you come get it this weekend, it's yours. So sure enough, that weekend. Y'all just hopped in the car. mm -hmm, Six hours there, picked up the camper. It was a little bit more rotted than we thought from the pictures. (laughs) Obviously, the tires and stuff must have been in good enough shape to get you back here. Surprisingly, yes, we did stop before taking our trip out. We stopped at... One of the gas stations put air in it, and we had to add these trailer lights. Oh, okay. They're just Mm -hmm. magnetic ones, but we ended up using like 20 zip ties to put it to the camper. (laughs) Definitely looked a little hillbilly, but... (laughs) It got the job done. Exactly. Okay, so six hours back, and then what happened when you started digging around or taking her apart? Yeah, so as soon as we got back, basically a couple weeks after that, we slowly started tearing things out, and we saw... More rotten wood, <laughs> maybe a little mold here and there. Oh, no. Uh, lots of rust. So we are like, oh, boy. My dad was not excited about oh. it at all. I was like, it's okay. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. Well, it certainly did because it looks amazing. 
So how long from the moment that you got her home until it was ready to roll and serve coffee? How long did that take? About two years. I didn't. Oh, wow. Yes. So I was still in school. I was a senior in high school when we first got it. So I was trying to still do school while also figuring out this business stuff. And the year after that, too, I decided I might as well finish my associate's degree. So I was in school during that, too. So we only worked on it a little bit between there. But when I finally graduated college, that's when we like full on started. So when you guys were tearing it apart and trying to rebuild it and put it back together, what were some of the biggest challenges with Little Fancy? Definitely the the rotten wood, because it was like <laughs> it was basically every single wall. And we were like, what are we supposed to do with this? Was the frame still solid or you had to like reframe Somewhat, the whole thing? Wow. We probably didn't do it how it was supposed to be done. <laughs> I think a lot of people normally take the metal skin off the sides Mm -hmm. and completely rebuild it. We didn't do that. We just kind of replaced certain parts of the camper with new wood. Electrical, we did hire somebody to help with some of that. We hired them to do a little bit of the electrical and then also the serving window. I imagine that would be very difficult. Yes. Yeah. That was one thing where we did not want to try to do. Yeah. Is there anything that you would do differently? If you had to do it all over again, I, it may have been smart to get a camper that was in better condition, (laughs) but it turned out good. So I can't really complain about that. I think something else I would do differently is the layout, like where the fridge is in relation to the espresso machine. It does make it a little bit more difficult to move around when there's more than one person. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the fridge. The fridge is so cool. That okay, where'd you get the fridge? I got it at Home Depot and it actually it was on sale, so it looks like it came from like the 70s. It's so cute. I'm obsessed. I keep telling Caleb, my fiance, we need to get one for our house. It's really cute, and it's also in the video that you have on the home page when your hands reaching for that really cool doorknob. So speaking of that website and the video on the homepage, I just love it. I think when I first saw your webpage, is that is that new? The video, is that new on the front on the homepage? The video, yes, that was added, I think, in the last month or so. I thought so, because I looked at your video a while back, like on your opening day or something. Mm-hmm. And it was a it was a beautiful website. It completely beautiful. But then when I'm prepping to for this episode, I look, I'm like, that video is the coolest thing. And that is brand new because I don't remember seeing that, but I'm super unobservant. So maybe I missed it. But there's a lot of shots of you working in the, the coffee grounds and the coffee beans and reaching for the fridge. And again, that whole vintage look and feel. It's just so pretty. So good job on the website. What Thank was your friend's you. name again? So that was Olivia Lauren. Olivia Lauren. It's her company, Olivia Lauren Designs Co. Great job, Olivia. I need to call you. Oh, and the video, the video was by Hudson Vernon, and he is a growing videographer. He's more out in the Leland area. Okay. But he's starting to do small businesses, and he's already done two videos for me, and they're absolutely beautiful. How long did it take him to film all those parts and pieces and then put it together for you? For the one on the website, he was there about an hour, an hour and a half. That's it? Isn't that insane? Looks so good. And and the shots of the marshland at the front showing that we live in the coastal area. Yeah. He shot that for you or that was that stock footage that he just uses or do you know? I could not tell you. I'm okay. pretty sure he probably shot it himself. Really pretty. I love it. Okay, let's talk about that restored coffee name. You mentioned earlier that your friend helped you come up with that name. Tell me about the process and how you eventually just landed on Restored Coffee. So Restored took a long time to get to. My family was putting an input on what I should name it, and it kept, you know, going going in the input jar. (laughs) Um, Everybody had different ideas of what to name it. I even did. I even went on Google and was like, meaningful words, and... The words were either too hard to pronounce Mm -hmm. or just very typical. Like you can see that everywhere you go. Typical for a coffee shop. Exactly. What were some, do you remember some of the ones that were coming down the Mm -hmm. chute? Meraki, which not a coffee shop name, but I think there's already a business around here named Meraki. Oh, really? 
and I couldn't tell you what it means anymore, but it was mm-hmm. something cool. And then obviously all the like bean names, like mm-hmm. anything with like Hebrews or yeah, different fun names like that. They just weren't hitting me the mm-hmm. same way. So I wanted something unique and restoration had come up a few times, I think from my mom or something like that. And I was trying to find a name that really encompasses the camper, my faith, coffee, all together. So somehow restored came to mind and I was like, that's perfect. The camper has been restored. Caffeine restores your energy. Mm -hmm. The Lord restores your soul, you know, all together. So it just kind of hit me, I guess. So when you first heard Restored Coffee, did you feel it right away? Or is it something you had to kind of do over? I think it may have been mentioned a while ago when we were brainstorming, but I think it was said more like restoration. So as soon as like Restored came out, I was I was like, yes, that's it. It definitely feels right. I love it. I think it's perfect. For when I look at you and I look at the camper, it just, it works. It really works. Thank you. Let's talk about your products. So you have the standard hot drinks, the espresso, the Americana, the latte, the drip coffee. Cold brew is kind of a big deal right now too. Cappuccinos, loose leaf tea and chai, and of course the chocolate mocha. Oh, Yes. But when I was looking at your list, I didn't, I don't know what a cortado is. Can you tell me what a cortado is? So a cortado is just equal parts espresso and milk. It's, I guess, a stronger drink, but also creamy at the same time. It comes in like a tiny little four ounce cup and it's adorable. That like something I would love. Okay. I'm, next time I see next time you, you I'll it. be getting the cortado. Am I saying it right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. And then you have something called a white copy. Am I saying that right? Yes. What is that? So white kopi is actually an Indonesian drink Mm. because my dad's from Indonesia. So that's kind of how I tried it. Yes. And it's, it's a powdered drink. So you mix it with water and it's creamy and it's probably more like a dessert than a coffee. Is that on ice? Is it hot or cold? You can get it iced or hot. Okay. And kopi means coffee. So it's a white coffee. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to have to try that too. Yes. For anyone that has issues with drinking milk, I just want to let everyone know that you do offer milk alternatives. Yes, oat and almond milk. Excellent. What other flavors do you offer? So I make all my flavors in-house. You do? Yes. Ah, I did not know that. Okay. Yes, I. that was something very important to me because for one, most of the chain places you can get flavors from Mm -hmm. they have a lot of added stuff in it and i just really didn't like that yeah and also i save a whole bunch of money just making my own at home oh really yes and you give me some examples of the flavors and and how you make them yes um so i have vanilla hazelnut caramel and then i've been making like a seasonal flavor usually for the base of all those i start with just a simple syrup sugar and water And then I add in like extracts or cook it a little bit more to make it caramel and stuff Mm. like that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And where do you purchase your coffee? So we get it from a roaster in Raleigh. It's called Oak City Roasters and they are delicious. We tried all these different types of coffees and just didn't hit like Oak City did. And actually one of the owners is in our wedding. So, oh, really? <laughs> yes. My fiance <laughs> was friends with him for the, the longest time. Mm-hmm. So that's how we were introduced. And oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, do they, what do they ship that to you or? So far we've been able to just meet up. They have like a little, I think vacation home out this way. So nice. they just bring it with them whenever I need it. Perfect. Yeah. So let's talk about your events. Can you tell us a little bit about the events that you service? Sure thing. So I can basically do most events. I can do private gatherings, corporate events, or sometimes I'm just randomly scheduled throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm mostly event-based, but I hope to eventually have like a consistent place that I'm parked each week so I gain like a little following. Yeah. As a consumer, I would like to let on Tuesdays, I can find her here or there, you know, wherever. Yeah, I think that would be great. Tell me about some of the private gatherings that you've already done. So, so far I have done one wedding and I really would love to get into more weddings. Yeah. That's my favorite thing ever. 
And then community events. I would say I've done grand openings for other businesses, which have been super fun. And where I first met you was a third year anniversary for Coastal Coast, Home, Coastal Home mm-hmm. Store. Yeah, yeah. Tell me how businesses, so I was just thinking for the corporate events, some companies that I've worked for in the past would do Employee Appreciation Day. Yes. And they would have someone come out. So I can imagine that that would be a good idea for all you local businesses to thank your wonderful employees by having Restored Coffee come out and service them, especially in the morning when they're sleepy. Yes, that would definitely be so fun to do. And also like Teacher Appreciation Days. (gasps) Yes. I think I'd like to get into that eventually. So I would love to hear about your future plans. Do you have any future plans that you're looking forward to with regard to restored coffee? Yes. So I was kind of saying earlier weddings. I really want to get into doing a lot of weddings, almost Mm -hmm. making that like a primary source of event Mm -hmm. that I go to. But also eventually I would love to open an actual coffee shop. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Are there any future plans in your personal life that you would like to tell (laughs) us about? So, yes, next month. Yeah, today's September, right? Yes, next month, Mm -hmm. October 20th, I'm getting married. Awesome. I'm so excited. Congratulations, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. You did mention that you would be moving in with your fiance after you're married. And where will that be? So we are moving more towards the Carolina Beach area, Mm -hmm. which... Which is sad. Yes. Because I am moving away from a lot of friends, family, and Mm -hmm. just this community that I've been able to get grow close with. But it'll also be fun, get to know new people, new businesses. And that is why I wanted to let everyone know that maybe I shouldn't have prefaced, but they probably picked up on it. But that is why we are going to be putting you here. We're going to launch you here in the Topsoil Insider podcast. But we are going to actually put you over in both locations. So you'll be in the breakout series as well because of that. So if you were to open your brick and mortar, I imagine that you would put it somewhere a little further away from us. It does make me sad because I just met you. (laughs) Well, if you go more out in Wilmington, then you'll be able to. Yeah. So far, my Wilmington folks, they're coming here, thankfully, because Mm -hmm. I I don't have a studio or anywhere where I can control the sound yet down there, but I'm working on it. So now we're getting to something that I like to do with everyone at the end of their episode. It's called Final Thoughts. So I just wanted to find out if there's any advice that you would give to other young entrepreneurs that are looking to start their own business because it's a daunting process. And now now you're not just speaking to entrepreneurs, period. What about someone younger, your age? What can you give them to let them know that it's okay to take that risk? Some advice, I would definitely say... If you have the idea, just go for it. Don't be scared because there was many times where it took me longer to do stuff just solely because I was scared to do it. Yes. Because I didn't know how to do it. And I was like, I can't do this. So don't be afraid to just do it, even going into it and not knowing anything about it. And also don't be afraid to ask for help. That's a big one. Yes. It's probably definitely 100% a pride thing. But a lot of the time I struggled with asking for help because I wanted to do it all myself, but it's okay to get help from other people. So, and also don't be afraid to pray about it. (laughs) That really, really helps you a lot and Mm -hmm. helps with your confidence. Yeah. You know, someone told me when thinking about opening up a business or just trying anything new, just try to gain as much confidence as you can. And even if it's a daunting path. Just go in confident. Have confidence in yourself that you're going to do it. And even if you make a mistake, or even if it doesn't work out the way that you wanted to, there's always lessons to be learned. You know, in the right. process, it's more about that journey and learning as you go along. And hundred percent, yeah. And it's okay to be scared, honestly. Totally. Okay. The last thing I have for you is: what is the one thing that you really want the listeners to know about you, Rini, or about Restored Coffee? I think the one thing I would love people to know is everything that has happened so far and everything that will happen is 100% 
given to God's credit and also for God's glory. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, so we had to give out that contact information. You want to go ahead and tell the people how they can get in touch with you. So you guys are more than welcome to call us at 910-660-1224. And then if you wanted to book us or needed to figure out information, we have a website, restoredcoffeeco.com, and an email, restoredcoffee at gmail.com. You are on both Facebook and Instagram? Yes, you can find us at Restored Coffee Co. Okay. Is there anything else? I'm just super excited to meet new people and form like a just a happy community and find ways to serve others. I love it. You're doing a great job. It's very impressive. It's very thank impressive. You. Okay, so thank you listeners for joining us today for another episode of Topsoil Insider, also for our Wilmington Breakout series. And thank you, Rini, for joining me today and telling us all about Restored Coffee. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you for joining me today on Topsoil Insider. If you liked today's episode, please hit the follow or subscribe button so that you can get the Topsoil Insider podcast delivered automatically to whichever podcast platform you're listening on. And if you're a business owner and you wish to set up a pre-interview or you want to advertise, please email me at topsailinsider at gmail.com. Please also find and like the Topsail Insider Facebook page. I provide links to the new podcast there each week, as well as providing photos of the businesses that I'm highlighting along with any of their upcoming events. So, hey, let's do this again next week. I'll see you around Topsail. Angie here with Houseworks Cleaning Service. Summer's in full swing and you live near the beach. That means you'll have lots of visitors and you'll need your home cleaned. We know your time is precious, so why not give Houseworks a call at 910-547-0260 and let us get her done for you. And as always, at Houseworks Cleaning Service, your house gets the works every time.